for the sake of our listeners yeah. who haven't heard the term before or haven't read the book, yeah. like what is emotional right. virtue? What is the emoticoaster? You know, the, these terms right. that are core to what you're saying, just yeah. give, you know, what does that stuff mean? Right. And I'm so glad that you had me on for eight hours for me to do that exactly, <laughs> which is define emotional virtue. Um, it really is a, a term that, you know, St. If St. Thomas Aquinas, you know, he probably is listening into a lot of my talks, but you know, he, he would just be like, duh, like, you, you know, applying a virtue to your emotions, duh, you know, it's kind of like just a play on words. Um, mm -hmm. Because what was happening is, is when I went, so I went to Benedictine College and my senior uh, seminar as a theology major, um, I basically just took so many Dr. Street classes, I ended up majoring in, in theology because I loved him and he was my mentor. And our senior seminar was on the, um, we read this book and it changed my life. And a lot of your viewers are probably familiar with it, but it's called um, Love and Responsibility by one Carol Oitiba. Um, and we read that book and it just sent my whole life kind of into, I mean, reading it with Dr. Shri, his book, Men, Women, and the Mystery of Love be, was born from my class and all of our conversations. And honestly, I was dating Swap during that time. We were like newly about to be engaged when we took that class together, which is like, thank you, Jesus. Like that's good marriage prep, right? So, um, so like whenever we were going through this, like the conversations we were having in that class, you know, there was just a lot. I look back and I go, man, I've hashed this out in my own life. I've hashed it out in the dorms with the college girls where my ministry was born as a residence hall director. You know, like three, four years later, out comes texting, out comes social media, out comes, you know, thank you, Lord. Like I got married before any of it hit the fan. You know, like, like I didn't text SWAT. Like a lot of people are like, how did you handle texting with SWAT? I'm like, T9, like it didn't exist. Like, I mean, J Jason, you'll laugh. They don't even know what it is. A lot of your viewers don't even know. Like texting was the slowest thing ever. Um, yeah. But you talk about like ghosting or like dating someone in your mind or, you know, all this stuff. As I was watching the girls and guys navigate that in college as an RD, I was watching it married. I was like, dang, this is like going to change the way people interact forever. This is going to change, you know, and, and what I was seeing is a lot of these college students understood chastity. They're like, duh, like I get chastity, like most of them were like Jason Everett saved my life, changed my life, Kristalina, eighth grade, I got the card, here's my card. You know, like they were just like, I got this and I love it and I believe in it. Um, but then, you know, enter college, enter young adult, enter, you know, whatever, and you have those insecurities, you have those, those wounds, you have the feeling of, I am never gonna be loved and I am never gonna be enough. And all of a sudden, all of the mind, it's, it's a, like the whole battlefield of the mind, right? It's all up in your head. And it's for men and women. I was very adamant about this book being for both because when people hear me say like, oh, emotional virtue, like, oh, you give talks on relationships. Like, so you're a female speaker? I'm like, well, I'm a female speaker, but I don't just speak to females, right? Like, I want the men in on this because we, I joke that the women can't date themselves, right? So like, we have, like the men have to be not only in on this, but the leaders of this. And what was so beautiful is when I came out with emotional virtue, um, it was, I was with a lot of the college girls and um, I gave a talk on campus at Benedictine uh, one night. We had like 300 women show up. The very next day, I had this pounding at my door. Open the door. There's like 12 guys in the hallway. And I was like, they're going to kill me. Like, you know, I, I always say if I'm going down. Yeah, pitchforks and like torches yeah, and everything. I, I, and it's my joke. Like, if I go down as a martyr, I'm going down by an ex-boyfriend. And you are too, Jason. So we're yeah. just prepared for it, right? Like, um, so I was like, oh, my gosh, they're going to kill me. And these guys looked at me and they said, you gave a talk last night to the women on like dating and relationships and you didn't invite us. Like, when's our talk? Like, when are you going to give our talk? You know? And I was like, next week, you know, I was like, yeah. yeah. So I basically gave a talk to the men. It was basically everything I was hearing from the women. It was yeah. everything that you, you know, that you and I, that some people talk about that, that they just don't communicate to each other. And so the introduction of phones and the introduction of social media created almost like this, third world, right? Like it created this other place. If, if, if relationships were complicated enough, you know, in walks all of this. And so yeah. like what we called it back in when we were in Dr. Shree's class was emotional chastity. So we would say that term. But what I found was every time people would say emotional chastity, people would come after me with pitchforks because they were like emotional chastity. Most people, um, if they don't follow chastity.com, they think chastity just equals abstinence. So they think yeah. like chastity, so they thought I was saying emotional abstinence, like don't have emotions, don't yeah. have feelings, don't have, you know, and people would come after me like with, with hatred. And like, I understood, I was like, whoa, 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 read the book, read, you know, listen to the talk. You yeah. know, like I'm yeah. not saying no emotions. I'm saying having authority and control and having virtue applied to your emotions. So I started understanding what that term kind of, you know, how that felt and, and sounded to people. 
and it was hard on them. They were like, they didn't understand what I was saying. And so I, I went with emotional virtue because I was just trying to get at the, the point. And this is the definition. That was kind of the backstory of how it became a thing. But it, it really is. And this is my, when I'm on the plane, when I get you for like a minute and a half, right? The definition that I've come up and then again, the whole 158 pages of like how it actually like, you know, and I, if you could go on for eight hours on how it actually all comes to play, but it's to rise above your spontaneous emotional or physical or sexual desire in the moment to be able to rise above that and to choose the good, the true and the beautiful for yourself and your beloved. And what happens is, is a lot of times when people are in the heat of a moment, like, like physically, you know, to be able to say like, whoa, like, okay, this is like, this is my boundary. This is my place. Like, I can't do this with you. Like we need to take a walk. Like there's kind of that ability to do that in chastity that is, you know, you see it, you know it, you're in a situation, you're like, we, we're out. You know, like we can't, this is not, this is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, with phones, like with these games that, I mean, a lot of girls and guys will say, like, I've been texting this girl, you know, if a guy's like, I've been texting this girl for six months. And like, every time we're in person, she acts like I don't exist. But then the minute I get back to my dorm room, like she's all, hey, hey babe, how was your day? You know, and this whole <laughs> idea of, of just, you know, like, a lot of people don't know how to communicate like one on one anymore. And so yeah. this um, the emotional ties, you know, a lot of girls will say, you know, I thought this guy, I thought we were like, I thought we were dating. And I found out that like, he does the whole, Hey babe, how was your day to like six other girls? And I had no idea. <laughs> and so, you know, like, and I, and I, it's hard because again, this is, we're just treading in the shallow water here of, of what it all is, but emotional virtue at the heart of it was what I was seeing in these college students is what I saw in myself without a phone, which is, yeah. Dang, I am so insecure and I am so like looking for, am I enough? Am I, am I pretty enough? Am I smart enough? Am I athletic enough? Or would you date me? Like, do I make the team? Like, you know, this group of girls, like, am I enough for you? Like, am I going to, am I going to make it? Like, who is going to love me? And what do I need to do to do that? And that is not just a physical chastity thing that can be. And even the, like all your viewers, you know, people out there watching, you can be the most like striving Catholic let's go team daily mass. Here's my rosary. Like you could be like on the God squad and still struggle with this because yeah. it's just that whole idea. The devil loves to just mess with us. And so I took that idea of the way he likes to tie us in knots and lie to us and lie about our worth and like really expose that in relationships. That's yeah. for, that's humanity. That's just being human. So I, I really wanted to hit that piece of it because I didn't think a lot of People were talking about that like inner core of like how we use each other emotionally, how we how we hurt each other emotionally. Amen. Yeah. And one thing that came to the light when I read your book is that, you know, a woman is such an integrated being that her body wants to go where her heart goes. And if she has no custody over her heart and her imagination, forget about having control over the body. And so yeah. if, if we're missing that emotional internal piece of virtue, self-restraint, custody of the imagination, chastity right. becomes so much harder. And so emotional virtue, I like that you went in that direction because it's not just as it pertains to our sexuality. This is something that pertains to building authentic sisterhood with other girls, building authentic brotherhood. And that's why it's so great guy girl, because you know I think as a whole chastity movement, there's been a lot of evolution out of the outdated purity culture of just sin management to yeah, yes. and these these stereotypes of just Thank like okay well, porn is a guy problem emotions are the girl's problem so let's put them in different cabins and deal with it and right. then hey guess what guys have emotions girls have porn like yeah. we got to work oh through this gosh, together yeah. and so I think there's been such a healthy evolution of that that's a breath of fresh air. And even though it's behind the times in the sense of, okay, we should have caught on to this 10 years ago, but I think right, your book right. is very much on the frontier of that. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that little clip, but if you wanna see the whole episode where this came from, just click the link here. And in the meantime, we wanna invite you to help us share this message. And there's a couple things you can do real quick. Number one, if you like or comment or share this video, YouTube will actually show it to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, we release videos every single day and you'll be notified as soon as those come out. If you want to help us also to spread this message, you can support us at patreon.com slash Jason Everett. That helps us to create these videos and show them to the whole world. God bless.